the only thing we need to do now is notify the main fiber of the fact that everything is done and we can go we can just wrap up the entire application right so how do we do that so what we can do because we know that printer is at the very end of our of our uh, directed graph of our pipeline what we can do is we can let printer return a done done channel and what we'll do is we'll also let the main thread the main fiber receive on that particular uh, on that particular done and look at this question mark it might look like a, a typo it's not the difference between receive and receive question mark is the the way we handle the closure of a channel so receive will throw an exception whenever the the channel we're, we're calling the method on uh, gets closed whereas receive question mark will just return nil in this case because we know there's only one uh, one uh, closure that is going to happen at the end of the execution for printer we can just be a bit more uh, you know a bit less conservative and say just receive question mark whenever either we receive a value or we close that particular channel just move on with the with the execution of main and if we've done everything all right we should see goodbye being printed on the screen we're actually going to make it slash r r so that we go to the beginning of the line and we don't see the the ugly control c and in order to do this i need to go back to printer and say that printer is now going to going to return a channel nil dot new and we're going to tap again we're going to tap and this is going to be the done channel and at the very end we will ensure again uh, mind that i'm doing this inside ensure rather than inside rescue so that we're sure we're we're covering all the cases and done dot close is what we're going to be calling and the only thing i need to do now is at this point just close the curly braces and here we go now what i'm expecting now is we won't have to restart the task anymore as you just as you just saw because whenever we press Control c the we interrupt the generation of new values we propagate the closure of all the uh, of all the uh, the channels in an orderly fashion from from the upstream ones to the downstream ones including ones involving uh, workers and at the end we just signal to the main thread to the main fiber that we're done so i press Control c you can see goodbye being printed and if i go and show you the terminal again you can see that and i'll just do it we can do it live once more i'm just gonna go to the terminal make a bit some room so that we can see what's going on actually right so we're gonna see how the application starts and then i'm gonna be pressing Control c and whenever that happens we're gonna see how in order channels are being closed and finally we notify the main thread so i'm um, on Control c now and we see the generator goes down workers one and two goes down the stats logger go down printer goes down and finally we see goodbye on terminal meaning the application is actually terminated this ter this is testified by this line at the bottom now this is really it so we went through a lot I'm sure there's, uh, uh, you know, you probably want to go and look at the code yourself, but, um, and this was about getting an exam, but before we move on, just one, one thing I wanted to mention that we can look into in the next session. So you might notice if you look at all the tasks and how we've changed them, in particular when it comes to printer, stats logger, and then for what concerns the, the, the status, um, the status, um, the HTTP request uh, handler task, the status checker, that's slightly different. But if you look back and you look at stats logger, printer, and the every function, you will notice a recurring pattern in the way we do things. In particular, you will notice that we always define a channel at the top, we then tap on it, and this is gonna be the, the, the channel we return and the channel that is owned by the fiber. And we're gonna be using that channel inside the fiber. And whenever we received we receive a termination request from upstream one way or the other. It might be because the channel we're listening to is, is, is being closed, or it might be because the user sent a termination request. Whenever that happens, we're gonna be uh, handling a close the error exception and then 
closing the down the down uh, the downstream stream. What this means is that there's a lot of potential here for just extracting this bit of logic, which seems to be common in every bit of the pipeline. So if I go back and show you this, back to the presentation here, it, it feels like there's something in common in each fiber of the pipeline that is in the middle of the pipeline. So stats logger, printer to some extent, URL generator as a source is a slightly different approach. But really, it seems like there's something that we, some logic that we can extract, a, a pattern that we can highlight and extract to make our code a lot, a lot neater, a lot more, uh, a lot more dry, right? So that we don't repeat ourselves. And then the other thing I want you to notice is how we handle the termination of uh, of a bunch of workers. And again, if you look at what we're doing here, is we're defining a particular channel, and then we're spawning spawning a supervisor fiber and a bunch of workers. And every time a worker has been terminated because of a closed error, we uh, send a message to a countdown channel that is handled by the supervisor. Once we are down to zero, the supervisor will just close the downstream channel. So again, this doesn't have anything to do with the status checker itself. It's a pattern we can apply anytime we're dealing with a bunch of workers and we want to terminate them in the right order without uh, suspending the termination of uh, without suspending the execution of code in any of the workers right so that all the values that were that the workers are processing right now are going to finish being handled and passed down to the next uh, to the downstream uh, channel and as soon as that's over we then go and and wrap up and close the channel downstream without losing any value that is uh, being processed when the first uh, the first upstream closure is is sent over I hope this makes sense, but there's a lot of potential to refactor this code. And this is exactly what we're going to be dealing with in the next uh, session. So I think that's it for today. Uh, please let me know what you think about this. Uh, let me have your comments and uh, see you in a week time.